Hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Sophie. Welcome back to another video. You know what's up. You know what's up. You know why we're here today. Ellie Hazelwood, my anti-pookie, has published another book and I read it. I knew I would end up reading this one. I knew the review would have to be made. I had my members vote and they choose this book. If you're going to say, why did you read this? People wanted me to. People asked me to, believe it or not. I also got a lot of people excited on Goodreads for it and then I posted my Goodreads review and it wasn't even that funny. It wasn't funny at all, actually. I couldn't come up with anything funny because I was just in pain. I gave it one star on Goodreads. I wrote abysmal. It's a very big word that I wanted to use, so I did. In hindsight, I should have just done the obvious, which is miserable or... I honestly can't think of anything funny to say about this book. I don't even want to give it the, the grace since we're in Easter time, the grace of making a joke about it or come up with a funny review for it, it doesn't deserve it. I got ready accordingly. I put on the red lipstick. I said, <sighs> I'm a vampire. If it's on my teeth, ignore it. I... It is even. <laughs> I'm going to put timestamps in the description because I want to talk about some other things first before we get to the actual rant. But if you don't want to hear me yap, this is going to be yapping, you can skip to that, okay? Love you. First, I want to thank my members who put me in this situation. So maybe this is like an anti-thank. <laughs> my members get my videos a day early. They also get a shout out on every video and they get exclusive content such as my Ruby Red movie commentary. And as I now mentioned, they also get to pick my reads. I do give them a list though. And the next vote will be on contemporary romance books. Ugh, I just have to read them guys. I, at some point I will have to read them and I thought why not now? Why not now? We have Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score, The Fine Print by Lauren Asha, It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey, and The Deal by Elle Kennedy. And I don't know anything about- oh! Mile High Club is what it's called, but I don't know the author. That's what I wanted to put on. Quickly write it down! Or maybe it's just Mile High. I just know there is like a plane on it and they probably fuck in it, so... <sighs> You know, the most important things I know. I don't know anything about these books or these authors. I've never read any of their books. And so I think sooner or later I will have to review all of them. Just to know what I'm talking about. And so I have to do it now. It's now or never. I don't know why I'm in such a hurry. So if you want me to read one of these books especially bad, you can consider becoming a member and then you get to vote. And you get to have a say in it. So thank you so much to all of my members. And now I will tell you who my members are. Because I love them so much. Because they are the best. Except when they make me read Bride. My members are Hailey B, Ashley Ranger B, Trinity ELW, Clara S, Kushimita, Deja, Queen Sif, Courtney, Grace, Elouette, Probably Brie, Marissa Simmons. No, Simons. Joe Beans, Samwise from Lord of the Rings, exactly that one. Usagi Swimfree, Megan May, Carrie G, Sydney, Haley Charles, Lacey Lace EDC, Asteria, and Emion. Thank you so much, I love you guys. That being said, you have to let me know if you've read Bride or not. If you want to read it or not. Because I thought I'm gonna take it upon myself and ask on my Instagram if people have read it and what they thought about it. If I remember to do it, it would be nice to do it about every book that I review, just to get the input from people who've also read it and maybe get a little bit of a diverse view on it or something. My Instagram is at honestlysophieyt if you're interested. And the first response, and this is anonymous by the way, I'm not gonna read out your guys' name because I don't know, maybe someone's gonna feel uncomfortable if I expose them. I'm not here to do that. The first response I got was someone saying meh. That's quite nice, actually. A meh is like a three star, I would assume. They rated it. For me, one star. Then someone said, this book was so bad, can't wait to hear you rant about it. Well, you're in luck today. <laughs> Though I do have to say that when you see me later in the video, don't get scared, I'll probably not look like this because it's really late and I'm not gonna film this in one sitting. I already know, I know myself. 
And I respect myself. And someone said, no, I'm never reading a contemporary book unless you recommend it. Hashtag team wait forever. <laughs> I will never in my life recommend a contemporary book to you guys. And if you're new here, then you wouldn't know. But if you've been here for a little bit longer, then maybe you know, I hate contemporary. Why am I doing this? I realized very early on in my reading journey, when I was younger even, that I did not fuck with contemporary at all. But as a reviewer, I have to read everything. I have to know what I'm talking about. I can't just talk shit. But if I read it, it gives me the qualifications to talk shit, you know? Someone said, and we will discuss this, but this is a little like preview of what this book is going to be about if you have no idea what Bright is even about, because I didn't say anything about it yet. I thought the knot was on the tip. Not knot? But like not like tying the knot that it was at the tip and you're gonna be like, huh? Or maybe you're gonna be like, oh, it's that kind of book. We'll talk about it. <laughs> I never thought anything about it, but it doesn't make sense at the tip. Well, maybe it does, but I feel like that would be, that would actually be painful. And then I had someone respond and say, the world building was so bad. We have Vamp City, but also Las Vegas. Werewoods, what? <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask! The word pudding was genuinely ass and we'll also discuss that, but I'm glad that somebody... How do you say? Reci reciproc... Reci reciprocated? Reciprocate? That someone felt the same way as me. Because <laughs> I also thought that. And then the last one we have is, honestly, I went into it just wanting to be entertained and it did the job. And that is a sentiment that I have seen a lot. So that's all what the people on this on the gram had to say, at least now that I'm filming. I don't know, maybe someone's gonna join in on that. But then too bad. Should have <laughs> should have answered sooner. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Maybe when I film uh, the second part later, tomorrow is later or in two days. Oh my god, what the fuck? Hello? I'm Warum? Ach so. Ach so. So sieht's aus. Ja. Yeah. Gut, dann komme ich jetzt und mach dir die Tür auf, aber dann müssen wir uns streiten. Yes. Okay. See, See you soon. This was not on the list of plans, but uh, I guess then you got to enjoy me like this now and then we'll see what I look like tomorrow. Maybe I'll put on makeup again for you guys. That being said, I'm really excited to rant about this and... I mean, you're, no, you're not gonna care because this is one video for you guys, but I'm really excited to talk about it because I have a lot of thoughts and I also saw a lot of people say that they... Ellie Hazelwood always does the same book over and over again. This is no different and that they still eat it up every time. And I think if you are aware of that, if you have that self-awareness of like, she isn't the... the, the I don't want to say it, but like, she isn't the greatest writer of all time and she uses the same things over and over again and you can still find joy in that and enjoy it, that's fine if you're self-aware. But if you are not aware of that and you kind of just ignore that and in, in general, like if you have a favorite author and you ignore the flaws that they have, I think that's where I see an issue. I'll elaborate more for you guys tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll do a transition so it doesn't feel that bad. Okay? Love you. That was scary because I'm a vampire. As I was saying, <laughs> I think that my main problem with Ellie Hazelwood is the fact that she writes the not just the same stories, which should be bad enough, but also the same characters. She has two archetypes. Well, also side characters, archetypes, but like two main for the main characters. And she reuses them for every single fucking book. They are interchangeable. There's nothing that makes them distinguishable between each other. If they all were put into... Or if you read lines by them, let me put it that way, if you read lines by them and you didn't know who was speaking to who, you wouldn't be able to guess either. Because they all sound the same. And so I think her unoriginality and uncreativity, if that's a word, is what bothers me most. But at the end of the day, she is making bank. She's getting her bag with minimal effort. And so I was going to say I can, nothing, I can only respect that, but I don't. <laughs> you know, but I'm a little jealous. But this just kind of proves to me, or that looks silly, that I really should at some point in my life write a book 
that's just so fucking stupid and to, to, just to prove a point. And that being said, what other things did I want to say about her before we talk about Doran? There will be a sequel to this book sometime next year. She has another book coming out in the summer. I actually don't know. I think it's in the summer. It's called Not in Love and it's... I mean, you can guess. You can guess. STEM, romance, enemies to lovers. Yes, you guessed correctly. I also just personally don't fuck with her humor. It's very millennial and the millennials think I hate them. I don't. Love you. There's nothing wrong with you. I just don't fuck with Ellie Hazelwood's humor. It's not funny to me. Calling someone a fuck waffle. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I think her husband is German. And I thought that because I was on her Instagram looking if there was anything interesting on there. It wasn't. There was nothing interesting on there. But she also mentions in the acknowledgements at the end that her husband's mother sent her the German edition of Bride, which has a sprayed edge. Of course. Of course. You could have guessed that. And that just convinces me that his family must be German because she also lived in Germany for a while. So... I do not claim her and her husband. Be gone. <laughs> Another thing that I saw today was that someone on German book talk, and they are not on German book talk, it's just a normal influencer that now started reading like a lot of people, good for them. They made a video about the fact that they ordered a few books and she ordered Check It Made. Fuck Check It Made. <laughs> made a review about it, watch it if you want and that she then also got bride and then that like fine you can get whatever you like and then in the same breath she said i've heard about bride that it's like a little spot like not not a little what how did you say they just heard it was spicy and she just didn't get that from the other books because she said i she loves ellie hazelwood she's re she's read um some of her books and she just didn't get the spice from the other ones i was like Maybe you read a different Ellie Hazelwood. That woman wants to write erotica so bad, and that's also a point that I want to make. I think that Ellie Hazelwood, with peace and with love, she just wants to write porn. And that is fine if it is porn. At the end of the day, she came from very low fanfic, as we know. I talked about it in Checkmate. I did, like, not a deep dive, but I just kind of talked about who she is. She has not developed further from that stage, I think, from a fanfic writer. Peace and love. She was in Germany during March and she was, she went to like three different spots doing a book tour and I saw two clips from two different occasions because I think she did three interviews, right? One of them, someone asked her why she was writing Size Kings. Oh my god. Because every single one of her books, the man is just so big and the woman is so small. Every single one of her books. Every single one of her books. Yet again, reiterating. She does not write anything different from the last fucking book. And again, people say, Ugh, I just like Ellie Hazelwood. Like, I, I just, they make me feel so good, the books. Like, they're just rom-com fun. Okay, but five different times? Maybe even six? And then Ellie Hazelwood's answer to that question, why she always writes big men, small women. I didn't know I was writing that. I didn't even notice. Alas. She said it just kind of happens. And to that I say, okay. There was a whole drama around her a, a little time ago that I also talked about that she did not get any ideas for books herself and that her editor was the one that had to pitch ideas to her and she then just wrote them because she couldn't think of any. And... <laughs> I believe that. She does not do any descriptions in her books. Quite frankly, I don't know anything besides big man, small woman. And I don't know what any of the other characters look like. I have no fucking clue. I don't know what anything looks like. Like, the rooms, the, the outside. There's a lake outside the house. And woods, because they're werewolves. Oh! <laughs> and then another thing, actually, before we talk about the book itself, is um, another interview that I saw, right? And she talked about the names. The names of the characters. This prompted me to look up the timeline of things because it confused me so much and the whole name thing, well, it's about the book so we can talk about the book now. What are the characters' names? Who are we talking about? Without me giving any judgment, I will tell you the names. 
the woman, the vampire woman, is called Misery. And the man is called Low. Yeah. For purposes of this video, I will not be calling them by their name. By the way, the dude is a werewolf, right? He's an alpha and his name is Low. And if you put two dots on the O, that means Löwe in German. That just means lion. So also very literal, very silly name. I will be calling Misery Missouri. I think that that really sounds similar. And I think that's more fun. And her husband, I will refer to as limited edition. L.E. limited edition. There's a whole plot in the book where she tries to figure out who L.E. Moreland is, which is his last name is literally Moreland. Moreland. Because he's trying to widen his territory. I feel like I'm talking about a fan fiction. Like... I'm sorry. Her best friend disappears and she finds a letter and it says L.E. Moreland on that. And so when her father, who she hates, of course, proposes that she marry a werewolf, even though vampires and werewolves obviously hate each other, and she hears that his name is uh, Low Moreland, she's like, yeah, 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 I'll marry him because my best friend disappeared and I think that he has something to do with it. Alas, he is not L.E. Moreland. His middle name is something with a J. I don't care. He is limited edition. That's a lot to say though, maybe I'll call him Low. <laughs> so why did I talk about the names? Well, because she gave another interview and I just saw this, like, just now. And it confused me so much because a lot of people talk about the names. A lot of people who also haven't read the book, but also who have read the book talk about the names. Because Misery, the main character, she has a twin brother and his name is Owen. Okay. And so a lot of people point out it's so weird to give your main character such a fuck-ass name and then name her brother like John. What are we doing? And then she was asked this question in the interview while she was in Germany. And you have to imagine the book came out at the beginning of February and she was here in my country at the ending of March, like 20th to 25th of March. And she was asked this question. So there was some time between the publication of this book and this interview where people had time to read the book. And also keep in mind, Ellie Hazelwood is the author. She wrote this book, allegedly. And she was asked, why is the woman named Missouri and the dude is named Owen? What kind of twin pairing is that? And she was like, Oh yeah, I don't know, like, I don't know, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> huh? Maybe I can just pull up the video to prove it to you guys. But the reason I'm pointing it out is the explanation for it is given in the book. There is a reason behind it. never thought about it you wrote this book <laughs> you wrote this fucking book and you've never thought about it you give an explanation for it in the book this interaction is so confusing to me because like even if she didn't want to spoil it which it's not a big spoiler why that's her name she could have just said oh it's actually in the book but i don't want to spoil it for anyone like there's a reason behind it she could have said but she just says i've never thought about it the reason is they are twins and owen came out first and then Missouri came out and the parents don't name the children in the vampire world, but the vampire council names the children and Missouri actually killed her mom in childbirth. And so they, as a consequence, gave her the name Missouri because they were like, you're, that's going to be your life because you killed someone coming into this world and Owen didn't. So he just gets a normal name. Now, I have another thing before we talk about the plot. I just want to get some general things out. I mistakenly called it a fantasy book and also omega verse it's none of those things it's a paranormal romance and it has elements of the omega verse but it is not an omega verse book why there is nodding in this book if you don't know what nodding is we'll talk about it by the way that people were talking about it from what i saw on tiktok i genuinely thought his dick was going to explode i thought i like i didn't really know what i was thinking it's not that dramatic Sometimes I really truly feel like people are just exaggerating shit 
for whatever reason because they want I don't know what they want they want to feel accepted they I don't know what they want to feel you you don't have to overdo it so there is nodding in this but at the end of the day the only that's the only like omega verse thing we get and also the marking she um writes about that the, because the dude is an alpha um, and he has to mark his mate and we have mates but since she the woman misery is a vampire we don't have this classic like alpha omega relationship and i think that she chickened out i don't want to use the word pussy we don't use that here but i would use it right now she did not want to commit to the bit and she never on her instagram or anywhere promoted it as omega verse but people heard about the nodding alpha uh, made and everything and so they just automatically assumed this was like full on omega verse and then in responses and in interviews she talked about it she talked about omega verse and she talked about the book like being omega verse but it's not there is that it doesn't count a lot of traditional omega verse works are homosexual oh my god the gays and so this is obviously a heterosexual relationship and people were freaking out over the nodding. Imagine if they read about the self-lubricating assholes. They would have never recovered. Alas, what I'm trying to say is she was strategically using this Omegaverse hype that maybe people that came from Wattpad AO3 that read about like fan fiction with Omegaverse, that they were expecting that and they were hoping for it. And she purposefully used that and then didn't do it. But she got people excited for it and hyped it up and then didn't do it. She didn't commit. She didn't commit. She didn't want to go the full way. And by having your main character, Misery... Missouri, I am in misery! Be a vampire, so not the same species and therefore not being able to be an Omega. She didn't have to fully go there. She also doesn't really explain anything about werewolves and their hierarchies quite frankly she doesn't explain anything at all there is no world building she has vampires she has werewolves she wanted to write it because she wanted to write about nodding she wanted to write about nodding and that's why she wrote this book but other than that there was no reason for them to be vampires and werewolves because they don't do anything vampire or werewolfish they don't it doesn't have any relevance to the plot necessarily um it does actually have a pl plot relevance <laughs> What am I saying? <laughs> it is relevant to the plot, but not to an extent where I would say it's justified. Like, they could have just been normal people with rivaling families in, like, the Mafia or something. Like, they didn't need to be vampires and werewolves. She did it because of the sexual aspect, which is fine. But I'm saying, like, then just commit. Like, just do it fully. Embrace it, is what I'm trying to say. She's not embracing it. Regarding the world building, just so I don't have to talk about it while I'm talking about the plot, we'll just talk about the plot. Again, there is no world building. We have one historic event where during a wedding of a vampire and a werewolf, there was like, they attacked each other and now they have their enemies again. And they don't really deal with each other. Humans exist. They know about all of this. They know about the vampires and the werewolves. They keep away from them. Also, vampires suck. Also, vampires are written with a Y. Because why not? There is no reason, again, for them to be vampires and werewolves. We'll talk about it more when I get to it. And also, the vampires are the, the, um, the worst. They're the worst species. They are, they are the least populated. The weakest. I don't really know why they're still there, if I'm being honest. If you wonder how the werewolves make their money, they are crypto bros and it is specifically mentioned that they do like they, they go to the wall street the one wall street the one they go there and they invest it's specifically mentioned they like they probably have like a finance podcast i don't know also something that truly bothers me and when it comes up i'll mention it but all of her female main characters this one is also a stem girly but she's into programming okay so she's not in biology but still and this was also the case with check and maid her main character female main character even if she has no connection to biology whatsoever they always know all of that shit they know all of the biology shit they will never they will think in in ways that doesn't make any sense for the character to think and it was something that i talked about with check and maid too because i was like why the fuck would this woman think like this she doesn't care about biology. She's not into into that shit. 
but I don't really know if she doesn't notice while she's writing it or if she feels I don't even know if she's like doing it intentionally I don't really know what the is behind it but it just doesn't make any sense for the character but yet again every character is written that way whatever guys do you want me to talk about the book now Let's get it started. Before we get to the rant, I would like to give a little disclaimer. If you like this book and if you like Ellie Hazelwood and you love all of her books, that's fine. I'm happy for you. Everybody is allowed to like what they like, okay? This video is meant for entertainment purposes only. I don't have anything against people who like Ellie Hazelwood or her books. I have something against Ellie Hazelwood, but it has nothing to do with you. Maybe you'll still enjoy this video regardless. You'll still find it funny. And if you cannot take criticism, then don't watch this video because this is not for you. Love you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> I'll just read out the beginning so you can get the idea. Before every chapter, there's also a line from limited edition. He has like a thought that he like he would like to share. Like one singular thought he always shares at the beginning of every chapter. For this one, it's this marriage. It's going to be a problem. She's going to be a problem. This marriage. It's going to be a problem. Already, I was like, this is not written well. This war of ours, the one between the vampires and the wares began several centuries ago with brutal escalations of violence, culm culminated amid flowing torrents of very colored blood and ended in a whimper of buttercream cake on the day I met my husband for the first time. Need her to shut up. I don't like the way it's written. I don't like Ellie's writing style anyway, but what's new? They're forcing the daughter of the vampire president and the alpha werewolf that just killed the old alpha to marry because there is a new governor of the human world and she doesn't fuck with the vampires like the old governor did and the old governor was being manipulated by the vampire president yeah so the new governor she doesn't fuck with them that hard and so the vampire president is like i'm scared that they will form an alliance against us and then we will die so the only way we can ensure that there's not going to be a war is if my daughter, who I hate, marries the new alpha that doesn't like me. Because the old alpha also didn't like him, but this one likes him less. I don't really know. Where's blood beats quicker, louder, it smells coppery and unfamiliar. They are taller than vampires, stronger than vampires, faster than vampires! So why why are vampires existing? Biologically, ev evolutionarily, it doesn't make any sense, does it? There's nothing good about them. At the altar, they're facing each other for the first time, and she notices that he looks a little funny. Like, he's really hot, of course, but he looks at her funny. And so he says, You, he says, voice deep, almost too low to hear, how the fuck do you smell like this? He loves her smell because she is his mate even though she is a vampire how this is possible we don't know we don't know um ellie doesn't want to explain it doesn't matter but of course missouri thinks that he thinks she smells kind of like twilight if you remember that she thinks that limited edition things she smells like absolute ass ass but instead she smells so fuckable he tells her that also you smell so fuckable <laughs> I love Ellie. So why do vampires and werewolves exist, you might ask, along with humans in this world? How did we get here? Well, don't worry, because in the first couple of pages we get a lot of exposition, so she doesn't have to do that later, because then they are just fucking the whole time, so don't worry. The thing is, humans and werewolves and vampires might be different species, but we're closely related. What sets us apart has less to do with the occult and more with spontaneous genetic mutations thousands of years down the line. And, of course, the values we developed in response. A loss of pure and base here. Oh, she's so cool. A repositioning of a hydrogen I atom. How do you say these words in English? And ta-da, vampires feed exclusively on blood, are whims with the sun, and are constantly on edge about extinction. Where are faster, stronger, I assume, hairier, and they worship violence. But neither of us can whip out our magic wand and lift a 60 pound suitcase on top of a rack or find out the powerball numbers in advance or turn into bats. That makes me wonder because this is in response to because she has one friend like all of her characters do they have one friend missouri was sent to the human world when she was a child to ensure peace between the humans and the vampires in, in like ret not retrospect how do you say in 
exchange, the human sent a human into the vampire realm and then she lived with the humans for 10 years and the child lived with them for whatever. So anyway, she gets a friend then because she's in the human world, she gets a human friend and they are talking about everything vampire related and all of these mysteries around vampires and if it's explained explicitly how this came to be that this is not anything magical but something evolutionary, why the fuck is her best friend or her friend, not best friend yet, friend, asking her whether she can eat garlic or not. Like, why do the same presumptions about vampires exist in their world as in ours, when they've existed alongside humans and werewolves for thousands of thousands of years? How did that come to be then? It doesn't make sense, does it? Because they would know it's not true. Because they literally exist with them and they know that. Or am I wrong? I don't think that would be the case in a world like this. That people would have the same assumptions as we do. Like that they can't see themselves in a mirror, for example. I don't believe it. Mm -mm. As I said, she lived with the humans for 10 years. Then after her time was over there, she still decided to live with the humans and live with her friend, her only friend, because she didn't fuck with the vampires and they didn't fuck with her. And her twin brother also didn't fuck with her. But then he does start fucking with her, not having sex. She, Ellie Hazel wouldn't go there. Also, I think that Missouri, um, Misery would be a nice name if it didn't have the meaning that it did, you know? The one trying to take out where people are like saying, what's one word that would be a good name if it wasn't, it didn't have the meaning it did and people were like saying chlamydia, like that's a pretty word, but it has a bad meaning or like a meaning. And so it wouldn't be a good name. I think that Misery also counts into that. But still, I can't get over that. That she was like, I never thought about it. I can't, I, did I misunderstand her? No. <laughs> so as I said, the reason this whole thing is kicked off is because obviously her dad has a reason to get her married for the peace of his people. Um, but we hate him. And because her friend disappeared. Her name is Serena. She disappeared out of nowhere. <laughs> Obviously, that's how people usually disappear. They were about to hang out and she didn't come over and then Missouri was like, I'm gonna find her and couldn't find her. Found the letter with Ellie Moreland, decided to get married. Here we are, here we are. She is also the best hacker in the world, um, as we are literally told by Ellie Hazelwood. After Reeks, I discovered one thing about Lo Moreland. Whoever took care of erasing his digital footprint was nearly as good as I am. And I'm pretty fucking good. Also, don't you guys worry. She is a virgin. I feel like the only... Well, no, I actually can't say it because I only read three of her books. But as I'm pretty sure... Wasn't the girl in... Um, yeah, of course she was. The, her first book, The Love Hypothesis, that bitch was a virgin. And then, I don't know about any of her other books. You guys will have to let me know. Let me know who's a virgin. <laughs> No, that's weird. But I know that in Check and Mate, she wasn't. But here again, she is. Why is the why is the girl in the young adult book not a virgin? But the new adult ones, they are always virgins. I don't know. Not always. I don't know. I'm assuming two out of however many times. I should be bored to death, but the truth is this is not too different from my routine in the human world. I have no friends, no hobbies, and no real purpose aside from earning enough money to pay rent in order to exist. I guess. I love characters like this. She has no personality. Missouri, I cannot tell you guys anything about her because there is nothing going on inside her little fucking head. And she has no friends, she has no hobbies. What am I supposed to tell you about a character with no friends and no hobbies? Why the fuck are you writing this? Because it's easy. And if she had friends and if she had hobbies, it would be a little bit more difficult to write, huh? Maybe we'll get there someday. There's also a child. Scary. The child is actually L.E. Moreland and not limited edition. He is not the L.E. we're looking for. This child is the one we're looking for. She is like interconnected with the disappearance. The child is his half-sister, limited edition's half-sister, and she keeps coming into Missouri's room and being like, can we hang out? And I'm not sure, and I mean this with reason love, if Ellie Hazelwood has ever met children, and I was already deterred by this when I read Check and Mate, because the main character in Check and Mate also has like two or three, I think two sisters. And the way the children, <laughs> the children, 
<laughs> the way she wrote the kids was kind of weird. Like the questions they would ask and the way they would interact and listen. Not that I would know. I don't know any children. <laughs> I don't know of them. But it just didn't seem right. Because in Check and Maid, that, in retrospect, that book was so weird. The sisters of the main character were always talking to her about sex and shit like that. And being like, oh, did you and your boyfriend fuck yet? Sorry, you're 12. Just to prove a point, Missouri is the, the greatest hacker in existence. And she can do anything. And if she and... What's his name? Zaid? <laughs> From Haunting Adeline did like a program hacker off, she would win. Zaid has nothing on her. They are both Steph proclaimed best programmers in the world or something. Maybe he's more of a hacker. She's like more of a programmer, he's more whatever. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. So I must be suffering a major cerebral event when I sigh and I pull up my editor and quickly use JavaScript to whip up a snake-like game? I don't think that's how it works. Now listen, I don't know what Ellie Hazelwood has to do with programming. Like, I don't know what the fuck she knows about programming. Maybe that's her hobby. Maybe she likes programming. Maybe she doesn't. Maybe her husband, I could imagine, might be a software engineer or something like this, which is how she got the idea. But I feel like even if you're a really good programmer, you can't just pull up a script and quickly, within like two minutes, program something. Because that's what she's making it sound like. I, I would think it would take you at least 20 minutes. But just because of all of the typing and everything also, you know? And you're gonna make some errors while typing and then you have to go back? No, quickly. She's too quick for everybody. It's her vampire superhuman strength. But as we learned, vampires are fucking bitches. So... There's also no reason for her to be a vampire. She's the most fucking boring vampire I have ever read about. And I've read about maybe like two. She doesn't do anything as we already established. And the only vampire thing she does is drink blood out of a blood bag. And then when they start fucking, drinking blood is something sexual. And so she sucks blood out of him and sucks him off after. No, no more lipstick. It's out lipsticked. I can't do it anymore. As we remember, Ellie Hazelwood is Italian. She is a European at heart, I hope. And also, just in general. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, she is not a US citizen. However, I find it very interesting. No, why do I just want to talk like that? I find it very interesting. In this book, it's a little bit more subtle that the main male character is super big and hunky. But she does still make it clear to you. By lines like, my husband, I discover, wears size 14 shoes. You are European. Size 14? What the fuck is that? That she has lost it. She has lost her Europeanness. Size 14? I actually have to Google that because I have no idea what the fuck that means. I'm gonna take a guess for my Europeans before I look it up. I'm gonna say 47. 47. I'm correct. <laughs> it's a size 47 to 48. I'm just so smart. Can I tell you something? I'm not faced. I'm not faced by that. But something that I am faced by, which by the way, she's telling us this because she's going through his room. Because at this point, she is still thinks that he has something to do with the disappearance of her best friend. And so she's like snooping around. She's looking in the, in the bedside drawer and she finds a loop, which is explicitly mentioned, of course. And it's silicon based. That's not good. As far as I'm concerned, you want water-based loop. That's better for you. For your gooch. Alas, what would I know? I'm not a STEM major, what would I know? She then has a cartoon villain moment with a dude, which surprisingly, nobody was sexist in this book, like explicitly. Usually the people are sexist, but most of her books always have are focused on a profession of the main character. And I'm sure that with her new book, we're gonna get a sexist villain. Don't worry about it. But since the focus here was not the profession but rather them having sex no one had to be sexist thank god however we do have someone being racist there's a dude and he attacks her in the kitchen while she goes to get her blood her food and he's like you're a vampire you bitch blah blah, blah like going against her because obviously they have beef and it turns out that dude is literally 15 years old 
and Missouri is 25. Imagine beefing with someone that's 10 years younger than you. Even like now, whenever people try to f fight with me, I know how to fight. <laughs> like when I have beef with people at work, nobody there is my age. They're either younger than me, well there's two people that are younger than me, Ugh. but they're all basically 10 years older than me at least, right? Ugh, I love working. And whenever they start beefing with me, I'm like, I'm not going to fight with you. You are a grown woman. You're a grown woman trying to fight with me. Sorry, I I have better things to do, like get home. Then this dude that she has beef with is like, oh my god, she attacked me first. And then everyone hates her, but then it turns out he's evil and he tried to kidnap the child. And then she protects the child by being like, watch out, you're being kidnapped. And then she also hypnotizes him because that's the one thing that vampires can do is hypnotize other people. And she's not good at it, so it has no significance. She just does it in this scene because she even has to touch someone to do it. And her dad, the vampire president, he only has to look at someone to hypnotize them. And she has to touch them, so she's really fucking bad at everything that she does. Even probably sex. From what it seems. I mean, he says she's good, but I don't believe it. She does hypnotize this 15 year old child that absolutely loses all relevance after the scene, and that's it. She has now proven herself to be good and not trying to sabotage the werewolves, and now she is it's like people are starting to trust her or whatever. Not that we care. We wanted to see cock. Within the first 20 pages, she confesses that she is looking for her best friend and figures out. That limited edition is not the one that's connected to everything, but rather the child. And he then decides to help her find her best friend. Did the sun literally go down in this video yet again? Unbelievable. So they join forces. He's like, I'll help you because you're my wife and I'm the alpha. People, by the way, go feral over the fact that he at one point says, Where's my wife? Mm. And he confesses that... The child is half human. Oh my god. The child is half human, half werewolf. Nobody knows but him and like some inner circle members. He's like, I have some seconds in command. And it's like 20 people. What's the point of seconds if you have 20 people in that position? <laughs> Peace and love. I go through his phone to make sure it's not being tracked. It's an interesting, vaguely wistful window into Lowe's life. Not that it not that I expected to find a choke full of MILF porn. Okay. He has no MILF porn on his phone, but maybe he does have DILF porn. We are in an Omega verse. <laughs> After all, aggressive energy between us dissipates as quickly as it formed, melting like salt in water. Salt doesn't melt, it dissolves. Bitch. If people refer to the airplane scene, what is happening in that airplane scene is so fucking boring. The spicy scenes in this book... Ugh. Sex scenes. <laughs> We're not on TikTok, I don't know why I said that. The sex scenes in the book don't really... F they don't really hit. They don't really slap. They don't really slay. They are actually kind of boring. I feel like in the love hypothesis, I remember it being more cringe. I mean, this is cringe, but like more cringe and like more... It was like five pages back to back. This one, it wasn't that much. They're in the airplane and he has to send her and Omegas and Alphas, they have to... I don't really know, guys. I don't actually know that much about Omegaverse. I have to be honest, the only Omegaverse thing that I ever read, and some of you can maybe tell me what it was, was a... <laughs> I don't even want to say it, actually. A Dramini fan fiction. Draco and Hermione, and she was the Omega, and he was the Alpha, obviously, and I cannot tell you a single thing about that fanfic. The only reason I went into it was because I was like, what the fuck is this Omegaverse shit? That was, like, five years ago. It's a really popular one, like, otherwise I wouldn't have clicked it. And I just remember that she goes into heat, and then they have to fuck. You know? But he sends her in the airplane and so he just kind of like licks her and bites her on her neck and that's also a thing that is in this book the scenting and the um the the marking at the at the neck at the base of the neck but again 
she didn't want to commit. He's just so, so handsome, even to me, someone who's so different, so chronically weird. I don't even... I t what, what am I supposed to say about that? Cringe? She then bites him for the first time and sucks his blood and they both discovered that this is something sexual because he didn't know, obviously, because he never had any contact with vampires. She didn't know because she's never done it. And they get addicted to it and then she does it in, like, more scenes. Yeah. But it's just, like, she kind of has, like, an orgasm because she sucks his blood and they almost fuck, but they're not at home. So they're on less like random people's um, office, so they don't actually fuck. He's like, I could fuck you right now, but I won't. So too bad. Then we discover that he is, of course, team of the skinny jeans committee. He is not the president. The president is Satan. He is, however, a very high-ranking member because he just came back from a run at some point, and he goes, "I'm wearing jeans." He went on to a run in jeans. What am I supposed to say about that? He frowns, I'm wearing jeans, plus a healthy layer of sweat and nothing else. The curtains are pulled, but sheer. The income, I don't really know what, what's going on. Low skin, at pretty gold, his wide shoulders, his broad, heavily muscled chest. He's still glowing with the flush of being outside in nature and he looks healthy, even with more scars than anyone his age should have. Yeah, why does he have those many scars? It never gets explained. Why does he have them? Who scratched him? Did he get whipped? Like every man should? <laughs> oh my god, I think I'm back. She gets poisoned because at the end of the day, she does really like peanut butter. That is her one funny quirk because she needs like some something about herself that's funny. And peanut butter is her quirk. She doesn't like food that's chewable. Or that, not chewable, but has to be chewed. But things like spreads are fine. And vampires like them. But it's like embarrassing for them to like it because they're supposed to only feast on blood. And so if anyone knew, it would be so embarrassing. And then she eats the peanut butter and gets poisoned. So, oops. Next thing I wrote down after she gets healthy again, she has to take a bath, of course, because she was like um, in a coma for five days after getting, po after getting poisoned. And they are trying to figure out if this was another attempt on the child, because the 15 year old dude tried to kidnap her for the evil people that are not really relevant because the real evil dude is the vampire president at the end, so it doesn't really matter. They assume that this was another attack or attempted attack on the child's life on po of poison because she eats peanut butter. But Misery also eats peanut butter. So who was supposed to die? Maybe both, you know, just get rid of them both. And she wakes back up. She has to take a bath because she's stinky. He joins her in the bath with his jeans on. He fingers her in the bathtub. And then eats her out too, because he's a werewolf. And then he comes in his skinny jeans, is what I wrote down. And that's exactly what happens. Also, we have the line, his icy eyes. His icy eyes. If I were to become an editor in my life, and then I got a client and they wrote icy eyes, I would just get rid of that client. Because who the fuck are you to think that's an okay line to write? Icy eyes. Also, his eyes are green. So how does that work? You smell like you just came. I stare back, speechless at, speechless at his directness. I did just come. And I need to eat you out. He, he needs to. Okay? It's a wear thing, he says. Almost apologetic. I nod. Also, she doesn't commit. She writes, come, like, I'm coming. But not with a you. So, again. She's not committing. They figure out that the dad met with Serena before her disappearance, so they go to investigate with the ex-governor. But before that, he's like, suck me dry, baby, and I nod. What the fuck was I trying to tell myself? The child's father was the human, and the mother was the werewolf. And they obviously figure out that Serena had something to do with, like, or was, like, kind of figuring out that... The child maybe was half-half, and that's maybe why she disappeared, because she knew something she shouldn't. And so they want to figure out what is up with the dad. They find out that the dad is dead, the human father. And so they meet with the ex-governor to figure out if he had him killed, right? And he did. Yeah, he it was him. Before that meeting happens, she does suck his blood again, and then he tells her, we can't have sex. 
because I it wouldn't work anatomically and I nod and the scene the first time you get introduced to the nod it's just her sucking his blood and his cock is out and then she touches it and then she, she feels the nod and that is how the scene ends so you don't know anything it comes up later again he basically assumes they can't have sex because it wouldn't fit his cock is too big no need to worry no need to worry it's not that big they also meet with her brother owen fuck him to discuss what's going on with him because he knows that she's looking for her best friend and he confesses oh by the way i'm going to uh, sabotage our dad and become the vampire president next and she's like okay why would you do that and he's like i don't agree with what he's been doing and she's like okay i didn't know you were chill like that <sighs> i didn't know you were chill like that she had no idea that her brother was one of the good ones he's one of the good ones kind of like that missouri is in werewolf territory and in exchange they also the werewolves had to give over a wear to the vampires to ensure the peace and she's been assuming this entire fucking book that that woman is um, limited editions mate. The governor told her at the very beginning and they told everybody that that was the case because otherwise they wouldn't have accepted the trade because it wasn't like anyone important to limited edition and they needed someone important to limited edition to trade in which is why it's also Missouri who's traded in because she's important to her dad which she isn't. He doesn't give a fuck. And they meet with this woman and the brother and Missouri and limited edition and then she figures out oh wait maybe they aren't mates and then she asks and he's like no she's not my maid I don't fuck with her like that she's kind of ugly and then it kind of clicks in her head with all of the information she's been gathering oh that means I'm his mate like the reason he nods is because I'm his mate yeah they have sex for the first time for it being her first time she's surprisingly unfazed his hands close on the round globes of my ass what they have sex for the first time in her apartment and he just tells her i'm gonna pull out you know i'm not even gonna make a big deal out of it i'm just gonna pull out i don't know if the knot's gonna work but i do want to like put it inside and he does put it inside they do a little bit of dirty talk that's just cringe she goes keep what inside sweetheart and she goes you'll come but again it's come and not come and he goes you'd be okay with that and she nods and he ground he i nod he grounds um, and then he goes, I'm not sure I'd be willing to risk hurting you. I just don't really know where that whole thing is coming from, from the hurting. Like, is his dick swelling to a point that it's like this? You do know that her body is built to birth a baby, right? Men just don't know any anatomy. I assume he's in love, like, she will try to tell you something different. I don't think he knows what a clit is. They do it. Also, another example of her um, characters thinking, like, no other person would. Does that have anything to do with the sex, by the way? Lo knows this because he opens his mouth to say something else, something that undoubtedly will make impeccable sense and feel like a punch in the solar plexus. What the fuck is the solar plexus? Your tummy. It's your tummy. Instead of just writing stomach, she wrote solar plexus because every normal person would think that and that's it. Oh my god. Love you. I can't even say peace and love. There is no peace and no love left in me. After they have sex, he decides that, you know what, it wasn't that good. I'm gonna break up with her. I, I did, you know, I got what I wanted. He breaks up with her because he's kind of overwhelmed because she's now realizing like, I think like we're mates. And he's like, oh my god, like, I don't want to be fucking with one woman for the rest of my life. Misery, you should stop filling your mouth with where words you cannot understand. It was a mistake telling you about the concept of mates. It's not the same thing any non wear can fully comprehend, let alone a vampire. But I understand how appealing it might be for someone who struggles with belonging. You have been abandoned and mistreated your entire life. By your family, by your people, by your only friend. You are fascinated with the idea of eternal love and companionship, but that just doesn't reflect what I feel for you. Okay. Third act breakup because we haven't seen that before. Oh my god, I didn't take any other screenshots about... What the fuck? Why didn't I do that? Oh, alas. I remember how it is. So he starts being mean after they just had sex for the first time because we need some drama. No reason, actually. We just needed some drama. After this incident, she gets kidnapped. 
fuck. Of course she gets kidnapped, he freaks out, he's like, oh my god, where is she, where is she? Alas. She is with her best friend, who was also kidnapped, as we remember. Now, Misery finds herself next to her best friend in, like, a random room, and she's like, what the fuck are you doing here to kind of catch up? Turns out, her dad is evil. We knew this. There were three people in this book. We knew. Her dad's evil. He doesn't fuck with his daughter. He said, fuck you. Fuck your husband. Fuck... Uh, I don't really know what else he's doing. He reveals that he kidnapped her best friend because she is also a half werewolf and she didn't know that, the best friend didn't know that, up until recently because she's been experiencing changes in her body and then she was like getting curious and so she was researching if any other or well, who her parents were first of all because she was an orphan, she didn't know who her parents were and also if any other like half humans, half werewolves existed, which as we know do, the child, and so that is how the child and the kidnapping are connected, and that's how the dad figured out that something was up, and that's why he kidnapped her, and he wanted to kidnap them because he wanted to study them, and because he didn't want them to get famous. I hate men. Then the husband, limited edition, comes in handcuffs and is like, what are we doing? What's going on? And then... The vampire president is like, I'm gonna kill Missouri. And then Limited is just like, no, please don't do it. And then the vampire president is like, then tell me where the fucking child is. Ugh, my battery's empty. You'll never find out how the book ends. I'm gonna go to bed. Um, yeah. So, how does this book end? As I said, the evil vampire dad was behind everything. So there's no reason for these sunglasses. I just kind of wanted to look a little bit cooler. <laughs> he was behind everything. He figured out that Missouri's best friend was looking into half humans, half werewolves, put one and one, no, not one and one together, one and two together, <laughs> and figured out that she also must be a half werewolf. And she was just kind of researching to figure out if that was even possible because she didn't know, because she didn't know her parents. He then kidnaps her, blah, blah, blah. They're now in a room together where we get everything in a long exposition revealed to us. Then limited edition enters the room. Then the best friend tells Missouri, oh, you know what, your dad thinks I can't shift into a werewolf, but I actually can. And then she shifts into a werewolf, and so that's limited edition, and then they kill everybody, including the dad. There was no killing on this entire book, and then at the end they just kind of put it all in one chapter. Obviously now we're at the end. The Literally one of the last chapters is them finally doing it with the knot inside. And this is the reason that I can't really take y'all seriously who pretend to be phased by this. So many people are shook at the knot. They're like, oh my god, I had to bleach my eyes after or I've never read anything like this before and it wasn't even that explicit. And it wasn't even that prevalent. They talk about it, obviously, and then at the end of they have sex once and it's just like him inside her and then they are stuck together for like 30 minutes before he can pull out. Like Peace and Love, I think if you've read Sarah J Maas, you've read more explicit shit and I'm sure all of you bitches have. That's how the book ends. He puts it in, he goes, Uga Uga, my mate, Uga Uga, and you're my mate, blah, blah, blah. and they live happily ever after. I actually forgot how to book. No, I don't forget. I don't forget. I, I will never forget. We have one of the dudes meet uh, her best friend who's now living with, with, it, with the werewolves and trying to figure out her werewolf identity because she's half werewolf. And one of the dudes comes and sees her and I think he just goes, fuck. And that's how the book ends. And so that's very much implying a sequel. There will be a sequel. Mrs. Hazelwood has said it herself. But at the end of the day, just like all of her books, there wasn't much to this. If you don't want to commit to the bit, don't write a paranormal romance. Because at the end of the day, what was the reason for them to be vampires and werewolves? Because you wanted to write the smut. But then don't try to sell, like, this universe to me that doesn't make any sense and doesn't have any world building in it and no explain- and you know what I mean? It's like, you can't- you're not doing it correctly or good. I don't know if there's a correct way to do it. You're just not doing it good. That's all there is to the book. They try to figure out where the girly pop is at after her disappearance, have sex in between, and then that's it. That's also why I don't like contemporary books. I know this isn't a contemporary, but it reads like one. There's just nothing going on. Uh, there's nothing going on. But I told you guys I'm gonna read a contemporary next because 
I don't really know. I just thought I should do a theme. <laughs> and that was the one that I settled on. I don't want to read Ali's next book. I don't want to read her books again. Maybe I would if she did something else again, because now I've read STEM, I've read Young Adult and I've read Paranormal. If she went into something different and like evidently tried to do something different, like she did with this book with Bride, then maybe. But the next book is just a STEM romance again. There was also no enemies to lovers in this book because again, the dude thought she was hot from the beginning and he could tell that they were mates from the beginning since he smelled her and he she didn't actually smell bad to him. She smelled really yummy. So he never hated her. They were never enemies. They should be because of different species. But then again, why? Why should vampires and werewolves hate each other? I don't know. The explanation given in the book isn't sufficient enough. And they never were hostile towards, towards each other. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, like they never did anything that was enemy-ish, like insult each other or have a fist fight, for example. They didn't do that. If your character is in love with the other main character from the beginning, they were never enemies. And you cannot tell me it's an enemies to lovers because that is just not true. It's false. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> the opposite of true. If you guys read this book, let me know what you thought about it. Maybe you read it because you wanted to give her another chance like I did, or maybe you are a Hel Ellie Hazelwood fan. Stan? Obviously, as I said, um, no hate to anyone who likes her books. I can see with the explanation of being like, the self-awareness of like, she does the same thing over and over again and I still eat it up just because it gives me a good feeling. Fine. But I feel like there's so many other things out there, so many other books out there that you could be reading instead that also do something different. Because don't you get a little bored? Like, Peace and Love, I said it with Peace and Love, like, that's no, not to like, uh, accuse anyone or anything. But don't you get a little bored reading the same thing over and over again when it becomes so predictable? Because that's how I feel with the books. Like, I get bored. It's like, there's nothing that surprises me. Just with books in general. <laughs> that's why we're here. You guys let me know your opinion. Um, again, I'm sorry I couldn't tell you guys more. The nodding wasn't that impressive. The everything that people hype it up to be, it's not that impressive. And the writing is the same as always. And so it doesn't even like it doesn't even make any sense for me to read any Ellie Hazelwood anymore because all the reviews would also just be the same because all of her books are the same. The only thing that maybe I could do is like read all of her books that I haven't read and do like one big video about it, like comparing them. You know what I mean? Like one big review for all of her books that I haven't read so far. But then again, Maybe if you guys pay me. If you watch the ads. <laughs> I love you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you to my members. Make sure to vote. Because not all of my members always vote. Make sure to vote on the next read. I hope you stay happy. You stay healthy. Peace and love. And maybe, or hopefully, I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.